In this presentation, we will discuss controllable versus uncontrollable costs. When considering controllable and uncontrollable costs, we're imagining our responsibility accounting system. We have our organization, which we're breaking up, we're decentralizing, we're giving responsibility to different managers of different segments of that organization. As we do so, we can use the tool of controllable and uncontrollable costs. We can break the costs out into controllable or uncontrollable as we measure the performance for different segments, for different areas, for different units of our responsibility accounting organization for our company. With a controllable cost, a manager has the power to determine or at least significantly affect the amount incurred. In other words, they have some control over it and therefore they're responsible for it. When we consider how we're going to evaluate someone's performance, just as we would on their personal performance, we say, hey, do you have control over what you are doing or not? What is happening here or not? If you do not, then we can't really hold you responsible for it. Well, of course, that's going to be the same idea concept for responsibility accounting. We want to look at those costs that are going to be something that they have control over. And if they have control over it, then we hold them responsible for those kinds of costs. For example, a department manager will have control over the supplies used by the department. That's going to be something that they're going to be held accountable for because they have control over the supplies that are used. We can contrast that to uncontrollable costs. Costs are not within the manager's control or influence. If something is not in our control or influence, it's not reasonable for us to be held accountable for it. The same concept, of course, is true for uh, responsibility accounting. If we're talking about management, we're trying to create different prof different centers so that we can hold people responsible for, we can assign responsibility to different areas. It would not be fair for us to hold someone responsible for a management position over those type of costs that they do not have control over. So we want to identify those things. What type of things do they have control over? What types of things do they not have control over? And then measure performance on those things for which they have control. A common example of an uncontrollable cost is the department manager's salary. In other words, if we were running the department, then we have control over the costs of the department, such as the supplies and whatnot that are going to be used and consumed within that department. But our own salary is not something that we have control over. We can't change our own salary. That's going to be someone above us who has control over our own salary. Note that the department manager's salary is something that we would allocate to the department for other types of decisions. For example, if we were making a decision as to whether we want to keep the department going or not, and the department manager was a manager of that particular department, and if we no longer had the department, then we would no, no longer have the department manager's salary. Under those conditions, those types of decisions, we would say that the department manager's salary is included within the department when considering those types of decisions. However, when making the decisions on the performance of that department manager, we don't include things that that department manager does not have direct control over. Their own salary is something that they do not have the direct control over. Note that the difference between a controllable cost and an uncontrollable cost isn't always as cut and dry or as easy to determine as we would think. However, it's something that we want to break out in order to do the best we can with assigning responsibility and being fair with the evaluations that we make. The distinction between controllable costs and uncontrollable costs is not always as easy to determine as we would like, but of course we're going to do our best job that we can to distinguish between controllable and uncontrollable costs so that we do the best job that we can to assign those costs, to assign responsibilities, to make appropriate measurement tools for our management team so that we have the most efficient type of outcomes that we can have, the most fair type of outcomes that we can have. Whether something is controllable or uncontrollable typically depends on the level of management and the type of costs that we're talking about. If we're talking about the lower level management, we're usually talking about the people that are directing and managing the day-to-day -day type of operations. They're going to be in control over those types of costs that are more short-term costs over the day-to-day -day type of operations. If we're thinking about something like the rent or if we're thinking about something like insurance, something that's going to be a more of a long-term type of costs, People that are managing the day-to-day -day operations will not typically have control over those type of costs. However, the next level up will possibly have control because they're going to be the ones that decide things like the rental agreements, uh, the leasing kind of terms and things within that nature, within that time uh, spectrum, with that, within that time horizon.